So last week, Rudy Giuliani finally sat down virtually with the January 6th select committee for a closed door meeting that the committee has been trying to make happen for quite some time now. Giuliani had been trying to put this off. He had, you know, allegedly been working with the committee to come up with the terms under which he would finally sit down and talk to them. Well, I guess they came to an agreement this past week. He did sit down and apparently he showed us that there is in fact still some honor among thieves because he refused to talk about the involvement of congressional Republicans in the plot to overthrow the 2020 election. He would not talk about the names. He wouldn't mention the individuals. He wouldn't talk about how deeply they were involved. He wouldn't even talk about who was at the meetings. So that's unfortunate, right? But as the committee says, this is pretty much what they expected, right? They had kind of already told him they weren't going to make him do anything, you know, to violate any kind of privilege he may have had, which he doesn't have any. So that was kind of a stupid thing for the committee to go ahead and say. But I think at the end, it really doesn't matter because even if they don't get it from Giuliani, they've already gotten it mostly from their own documents. <laughs> like they know to a degree, which lawmakers were involved. They may not have all the names, but eventually somebody's going to squeal, but Hey, Rudy Giuliani, man, all those years taken on the mob. Apparently he learned a thing or two from him and he's no squealer. Except of course, for the one person he totally ratted out <laughs> in these, uh, in this little sit down. And that was of course, Sidney Powell. According to a report from the guardian, Giuliani spoke at length about Sidney Powell's involvement and how she had a direct meeting with Donald Trump and then said, you got to use the resources of the government to go out and confiscate all these voting machines. And at that point, Giuliani says, Hey, I stepped in and I said, Powell, you get out. You're done. We don't want you anymore. You're a bit loony. Maybe. I don't know if he said that he should have, right? I mean, we wouldn't hold that against him if he did, but then he said he, of course, told Trump, let's, let's not go the Sidney Powell route, right? Cuckoo. I think instead what we should do is we have Mike Pence, right? He's overseeing this whole thing on January 6th because the meeting was of course, prior to January 6th. Let's have him just over overturn it there. Let's have him throw out certain electors from certain states that were filled with fraud. Cause I totally believe that there was all this fraud, Giuliani says. And I get to that in a minute. Cause that is very important. So that's what Giuliani said. Like, that was our plan. You know, Sidney Powell's over here with this extreme militant view. And we're like, no, not happening, Sid. We're going to just use the law to our advantage. Because again, Giuliani said he firmly believes that the election was in fact riddled with fraud and therefore stolen, even though we all know it wasn't. Let me read this from the guardian though, that kind of explains why Giuliani was adamant about explaining that he still believes the election was stolen. Here it is. Giuliani told the select committee that he disagreed with the justice department and that the evidence for election fraud was incontrovertible. The sources said seemingly making the case that his belief meant he could not have acted with criminal intent to obstruct Congress. Now I have talked about this before, but let me reiterate it just one more time for anybody who hasn't seen those older videos. Legally speaking, if Donald Trump or somebody like Rudy Giuliani, if they can prove that they genuinely believed that there was enough fraud to overturn the election results, right? To prove the election was legitimately stolen. If they honest to God in their brains believed it, that actually would almost completely absolve them of any criminal charges. Now, Again, as I always say, that's a big pill to swallow, right? I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't agree with you. It doesn't matter if you agree with me, legally speaking, that's what can happen. You can't have these specific crimes if there's no intent. And that's what a lot of people overlook. Look, we want Donald Trump to go to jail. All right. It's pretty obvious to nearly all of us, regardless of your legal background that yeah, laws were broken here. I, I don't think there's much agreement among any of us about that. The problem is if these individuals were to go on trial for it and they prove that we legit thought it was stolen, 
then everything they did as government officials and as lawyers in the case of Rudy Giuliani does become legitimate in the eyes of the law. Now we can talk all day long about how that's a stupid part of the law, but it's a part of the law nonetheless. It's a part of the law that Giuliani clearly knows. And that is why he kept hammering the point that he totally believes the election was stolen, still does to this day. So you're not gonna get him with obstruction of Congress. It may seem stupid, but believe it or not, that is a legal argument that is probably going to work. Hey everyone, this is Aspen. And did you know that for the low, low cost of $0 per day, you can subscribe to the Fair and Balanced YouTube channel. We also encourage you to like, comment, and share. But again, click that subscribe button and help Aspen. Oh not be so grumpy.